Hi, my name is Treasure Allen. I'm a junior at Thomasville High School. Julia, like the spit pebble children, Julia is a child, but that after all is not her fault. While her father George cleans them all each night, Julia sits by my domain. She can sit anywhere she wants, by the carousel, in the empty food court, on the bleachers, coated in sawdust, but I am not bragging when I say that she always chooses to sit with me. I think it's because we both love to draw. Sarah, Julia's mother, used to help clean them all, but when she got sick and grew pale and stooped, Sarah stopped coming. Every night, Julia offers to help George, and every night, he says firmly, homework, Julia. The floors will just get dirty again. Homework I have discovered involves a sharp pencil and thick, and thick books and long sides. I enjoy chewing pencils. I am sure I will excel at homework. Sometimes Julia do dozes off, and sometimes she reads her books, but mostly she draws pictures and talks about her day. I don't know why people talk to me, but they often do. Perhaps it's because they think I can't understand them, or perhaps it's because I can't talk back. Julia likes science and art. She doesn't like Leela Berkey, who teases her because her clothes are old, and she does not like Deshaun Williams, who teases her too, but in a nice way. She would like to be a famous artist when she grows up. Sometimes Julia draws me. I am an elegant fellow in her pictures with my silver black back gleaming like moon on moss. I never look angry the way I do on the fading billboard by the highway. I always look a bit sad though. Drawing Bob. I love Julia's pictures of Bob. She draws him flying across the page, a blur of feet and fur. She draws him motionless, peeking out from behind the trash can or the soft heel of my belly. Sometimes in her drawings, Julia gives Bob wings or a lion's mane. Once she gave him a tortoisey shell, but the best thing she ever gave him wasn't a drawing. Julia gave Bob his name. For a long time, no one knew what to call Bob. Now and then, a mall worker would try to approach him with the tidbit, here, doggy. They caught him holding out a french fry. Come on, pooch, they'd say. How about a little piece of a sandwich? But he would always vanish into the shadows before anyone could get too close. One afternoon, Julia decided to draw the little dog curled up in the corner of my domain. First, she watched him for a long time. Chewing on her thumbnail, I could tell she was looking at him the way an artist looks at the world when she's trying to understand it. Finally, she grabbed her pencil and set to work. When she was finished, she held up the page. There he was, the tiny big-eared dog. He was smart and cunning, but his gaze was wistful. Under the picture were three bold, confident marks, circled in black. I was pretty certain it was a word, even though I couldn't read it. Julia's father peered over her shoulder. That's him exactly, he said, nodding. He pointed to the circled mark. I didn't realize his name was Bob, he said. Me either, said Julia. She smiled. I had to draw him first. Bob and Julia. Bob will not let humans touch him. He says their scent upsets his digestion. But every now and then, I see him sitting at Julia's feet. Her fingers move gently just behind his right ear. Mac. Usually, Mac leaves after the last show, but tonight in his office, he was working late. When he's done, he stops by my domain and stares at me for a long time while he drinks from a brown bottle. George joins him, broom in hand, and Mac says the things he always say. How about how about that game last night and business has been slow but it'll be better you'll see and don't forget to empty the trash mac glances over at the picture julia's drawing which what are you making what are you making he asks it's for my mom julia says it's a flying dog she holds up her drawing eyeing it critically she likes airplanes and dogs hmm mac murmurs sounding unconvinced he looks at george how's the wife doing anyway about the same, George says. He has good days and bad days. Yeah, don't we all, Max says. Max starts to leave, then pauses. He reaches into his pocket, pulls out a crumbled green bill, and presses it into George's hand. Here, Max says with a shrug. Buy the kids some more crayons. Max is already out the door before George can yell thanks. Not sleepy. Stella, I say after Julia and her father go home. I can't sleep. Of course you can, she says. You are the king of sleepers. Shh, Bob says from his perch on my belly. I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming about chili fries. 
I'm tired, I say, but I'm not sleepy. What are you tired of, Stella asks. I think for a while it's hard to put into words. Gorillas are not complainers. We're dreamers, poets, philosophers, nap takers. I don't know exactly. I kick at my tire swing. I think I may be a little tired of my domain. That's because it's a cage, Bob tells me. Bob is not always tactful. I know, Stella says. It's a very small domain, and you're a very big gorilla, Bob adds. Stella, I ask. Yes, I notice you were limping more than usual today. Is your leg bothering you? Just a little, Stella answers. I sigh. Bob resettles. His ears flick. He drools a bit, but I don't mind. I'm used to it. Try eating something, Stella says. That always makes you happy. I eat an old brown carrot. It doesn't help, but I don't tell Stella. She needs to sleep. You could try remembering a good day, Stella suggests. That's what I do when I can't sleep. Stella remembers every moment since she was born. Every scent, every sunset, every slight, every victory. You know I can't remember much, I say. There's a difference, Stella says gently, between can't remember and won't remember. That's true, I admit. Not remembering can be difficult, but I've had a lot of time to work on it. Memories are precious, Stella adds. They help tell us who we are. Try remembering all your keepers. You always like Carl, the one with the harmonica. Carl, yes. I remember how he gave me a coconut when I was still a juvenile. It took me all day to open it. I try to recall other keepers I have known, the humans who cleaned my domain and prepared my food and sometimes kept me company. There was Juan who poured Pepsis into my waiting mouth and Katrina who used to poke me with the broom and I was sleeping when I was sleeping. And Ella who sang, how much is that monkey in the window? with a sad smile while she scrubbed my water bowl. And there was Gerald, who once bought me a box of fat, sweet strawberries. Gerald was my favorite keeper. I haven't had a real keeper in a long time, Max says. He doesn't have the money to pay for an eight babysitter. These days, George cleans my cage and Mac is the one who feeds me. When I think about all the people who have taken care of me, mostly it's Mac, I recall, day in and day out, year after year. Mac, who bought, me, who bought me and raised me and says I'm no longer cute, as if I was a silver bat, as if a silver bat could never be cute. Moonlight falls on the frozen carousel, on the silent popcorn stand, on the stall of leather belts that smell like long gone cows, the heavy work of Stella's breathing sounds like the wind in trees, and I wait for sleep to find me. The Beetle. Mac gives me a new black crayon and a fresh pile of paper. It's time to work again. I smell, I smell the crayon, roll it in my hands, press the sharp point against my palm. There's nothing I love more than a new crayon. I search my domain for something to draw. What is black? An old banana peel will work, but I've eaten them all. Not tag is brown. My little pool is blue. The yogurt raisin I'm saving for this afternoon is white, at least on the outside. Something moves in the corner. <clears throat> I have a visitor. A shiny beetle has stopped by. Bugs often wander through my domain on their way to somewhere else. Hello, beetle, I say. He freezes silent. Bugs never want to chat. The beetle's an attractive bug with a body like a glossy nut. He's black as starless night. That's it. I'll draw him. It's hard making a picture of something new. I don't get the chance that often. But I try. I look at the beetle who's being kind enough not to move, then back at my paper. I draw his body, his legs, his little antenna, his sour expression. I'm lucky the beetle stays all day. Usually bugs don't linger when they visit. I'm beginning to wonder if he's feeding all right. Bob, who's been known too much on bugs from time to time, offers to eat him. I tell Bob that won't be necessary. I'm just finishing my last picture when Mac returns. George and Julia are with him. Mac enters my domain and picks up a drawing. What the heck is this, he asks. Beats me what Ivan think, he, think he's drawing. This is a picture of nothing, a big black nothing. Julie is standing just outside my domain. Can I see, she asks. Mac holds my picture up to the window. Julia tips her head. She squeezes one eye shut, then she opens her eye and scans my domain. <coughs> I know, she exclaims. It's a beetle. See that beetle over there by Ivan's pool? Man, I just sprayed this place for bugs. Mac walks over to the beetle and lifts his foot. Before Mac can stop, the beetle skitters away. 
disappearing through a crack in the wall. Mac turns back to my drawings. So you figure this is a beetle, huh? If you say so, kid. Oh, that's a beetle for sure, Julia says, smiling at me. I know a beetle when I see one. It's nice, I think, having a fellow artist around. That's it.